Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC3D. So today we're going to be going through a detailed video on going through the probing cycles within Commander and when you should be using a particular probing cycle. This is basically going to be a definitive video of the new probing options that have been added into our CNC3D Commander software. So what we've done, we've just got our Commander software open here. As you can see, the current build is 282. So if you are watching this video and you go into the About button here, if you are on build 282 or later, then all of these probing rules will apply to you and you should be good to go with regards to following this video on each of the separate probing cycles. So let's just jump straight into it here and talk about probing first. So let's first of all show you how to get your probe connected up to one of our CNC 3D Queen Bee machines or up to one of our QB2 CNC machines. Your controller or machine might be slightly different, so just make sure that you do wire up your probe as per your manufacturer's recommendations. So we're going to show you how to do it now on a CNC 3D Queen Bee. So let's go do that. Okay, so we've got our plug and loom here. So on one side, you'll notice we have a banana plug and we have an alligator clip. This side is gonna to go to your probe. All right, now this side over here, on our Queen Bee and QB2 machines, we have an easy probe mount that we can use, which you can just see here in the background. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna connect this up we're gonna connect this up to your machine. So first thing, we're just gonna take this end here, which we know is gonna to go to the actual machine. So let's plug that in. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our CNC 3D XYZ probe touch plate and we're gonna take the other end of our cables. And the first thing we need to do is we need to connect up this banana plug. Now, you'll notice that there's a hole on one side of the touch probe and there's also a hole on the other side of the touch probe. So you can choose to put this one in to be the most convenient for where you're actually probing from. So in this case, with the type of probing that we're doing today, we're just gonna put our banana plug into this side here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna position this over our job now. And then we are basically going to connect this up to our end mill. And this is how the circuit is going to work. So let's go do that now. All right, so we have this positioned on our timber. And then now we're gonna take our probe here and we're gonna put it nice and high up here on this end mill. And so if we have a look now, we can see that we have that in a beautiful position for us to be able to go through and do our probing cycle. So we have just gone ahead here and we have set up our probe. It's currently sitting in position. The first and most important thing that we should go ahead and do is actually take our probe and make sure that it's definitely working. So if you take a look in Commander down the bottom here, you've got these limit trigger status options. One of them here says P, which is for our probe. So when the probe is not connected, you'll see that the light here is green, which means that it's clear. If we go ahead and we take our probe and touch it up to our tool, we should see that flashing solid indicating that it's definitely touching. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Okay, so as you can see, the alarm light on our P lit up when we touched our probe against our tool. That means that we have set things up correctly. Now, just a little tip here for you. If you do notice that that light, when you're holding the probe up to the actual end mill, if you do notice that it is flickering or like as in it's flickering between green and the alarm color, then try swapping your probe wires around. This will fix the issue the majority of the time. It's generally not a big problem, but if you are probing large bits of alloy or if you have an alloy bed on your machine and you're cutting alloys, you may need to swap this around in order to work with an inductive probe. So give that a try if you do experience any issues with your probing and that should resolve it. 
So the next thing for us to do at this point in time is basically go ahead and take a look at our probing cycles. So we're gonna click on probing here and we're gonna take a look at the probing wizard. Now you'll notice that there's multiple tabs across the top here. So we've got Z axis, corner, circle, angle, and then some settings. So let's go ahead first and start with our Z axis probing. So you'll notice here in the diagram, the probe is a little bit different. We've got one of our CNC 3D XYZ touch probes down on our material here in the video. And so we are going to be using that for doing our Z probing today. You can also use one of our Z axis probes. It works the same way. The most important thing to do is just make sure to get your vernier calipers out and measure the actual thickness of your probe on that edge that you're probing on. So in the case of one of these Z probes, you would measure from the top here to the bottom and enter that value exactly into here. Now this can be within three decimal places. So entering in the closest possible value will definitely give you the best results. So always double check with vernier calipers. This value in here will be saved for future reference. So you can always just reuse the same probe and it will, will remember this information that you have here. So what we need to do first, obviously, is it's telling us each one of these probing cycles has some instructions on what you need to do to set it up. So we are basically going to have to move our end mill directly above the center of our probe. So to do that, we're just gonna close out of the wizard here and we're just gonna jog our machine across here. So I'm just gonna quickly show up this video here and show you how to do that. So let's just nudge across. and nudge it back. And that looks like a pretty good spot for us to probe. So let's just go back here into probing. And now let's go ahead and run our Z probing. So this is very simple. We're gonna put in the approximate distance from the surface of our material. So let's put about 20 millimeters in here and we are gonna enter in the thickness of our probe. Now we've already measured the Z axis on this with vernier calipers and it is 5.002 millimeters. So we're gonna enter that value in. And then now all we need to do is just hit start probing. Now you'll see here in Commander by default, if you are in beginner mode, which is the default version of Commander, we're gonna give you a lot of friendly alerts just to help you uh, avoid making any mistakes that a lot of beginners do encounter. So the first thing I want you to do is check whether or not your probe is working. We have already done that earlier at the start of this video. So let's just go ahead and probe now. So the first thing it wants to do is it wants to do a rough Z probe first. So it's going to approach it at a little bit of speed and it's going to seek it out and then it's going to back off slightly. And then now it's going to do a fine probe of the Z where it approaches at a much slower rate. So that has now completed and we can basically close out of the wizard here. And if you take a look, we're just gonna go and remove our probe and see exactly where it's sitting. Okay, so if we take a close look here now, you'll notice that we have a bit of a height distance between where the bottom of our tool is and where the surface of our actual material is. So we need to make sure that we definitely have the right detail. So if we take a look in here, it was 5.02 mil, so that was correct. So you will notice that in the Z job coordinates, it is now 6.002 millimeters. So that is the value that it has set. Now you'll notice that we have a distance over here that distance over there should be this exact number. So if we wanted to lower our end mill directly onto the surface of our material, what we would do is take whatever this number that we have here in the Z job coordinates, and we're gonna put it down here and go 6.002, and we're gonna hit Z minus just once. And that has now lowered our end mill directly onto the surface of our material. 
Now, what you will notice is that this is not actually perfectly zero, it's 0 0.002. Now, I'm glad that this has happened because it's a good opportunity to explain what's happening here. So we would be expecting this number to be total zero, but the job coordinates themselves, they are actually an offset of whatever your machine coordinates are. So what's actually happening is it's trying to calculate this value based on whatever the current offset is of this machine variable. And sometimes that number cannot be divided to be correct, perfect zero. So what you can do is basically assume that if you've got 0 0.002 millimeters, that number is so small that the capabilities and the accuracy of your machine is nowhere near this low. So you can basically treat this number as zero. So if you ever do see these numbers after you hit zero job or after you try to get it to a position and it seems like it's a little bit off, if we were to ask the machine to move that distance right now, the machine wouldn't actually even move. So it wouldn't actually make any difference at all whatsoever. So treat these numbers, if you ever see them in X, Y, or Z, please treat these as zero when they are this low. So let's just move back on to the probing. So we've obviously just probed our Z. We've now set our position. If we were getting ready to go ahead and start a job at this point in time, first thing we would do is just hit our zero job here and that will zero out these numbers altogether and you would be good to go ahead and run your job now. Now, when's the right time for you to use a Z probe? Well, if you're doing a tool change, so for example, if you're doing a 3D carving and you need to change your tool, there's no real guaranteed way to assume exactly how far out your end mill is sticking uh, or whether or not it's sticking out the same distance as the previous tool actually was. So what you would do is you would retain your original X and Y job coordinates and then you would basically just probe your Z in order to adjust it for the new tool and go back to your original X and Y starting position and then you should be good to go from there. So that's pretty much how you do a Z probe. So this is gonna be your most common probing and you can obviously use one of these XYZ probes or you can use one of these Z only probes. Both of them will work exactly the same way. So let's just go ahead now and move on to our XYZ probing or our corner probing. Now the purpose of corner probing is so that you can perfectly find the corner of a bit of material. So you can go ahead and work. As you can probably see in this video, it might be a little bit hard. There is a slight rounded edge on the corner of this timber that we're using. This would be very difficult normally for you to be able to find the perfect corner of this material. This is where an XYZ probe really shines. So let's go ahead first and just jog our machine out of the way and give ourselves some room. And let's go ahead and put our probe back in position and attach our alligator clip. Okay, so now that we are in position, Okay, so now that we're in position, let's just go ahead here and do our XYZ probing. So if we click on the probing button and go into the corner tab, we can see on here that we have all of our measurements. Now it is very important for you to make sure to use vernier calipers to load all of these values in off your XYZ probe. Um, using verniers will give you a very accurate result. The same goes for your end mill diameter. It's always a good idea just to get your vernier calipers out and very precisely measure the actual cutter size that you do have. Um, and then that will give you the best results. Now keep in mind, these settings here will be saved the next time you go in here. So if you do reuse this probe, it's very, very easy for you just to be able to start a probing cycle when you reuse an existing probe. So let's go ahead. We know we've got a four mil and mil in there. So we're going to leave that value. We've already entered in all of these details to suit our probe. So we're pretty much good to go. So if we look at the instructions, 
So place your XYZ probe on the corner of your choosing. So we're going to be doing the front left hand corner for the purposes of this video. We've gone ahead and entered in all of our details, then position your end mill around 10 mil directly above the center of the probe. So let's get a little bit closer there to the center. It doesn't need to be perfect. We have factored in for this in the settings that you can tune, but let's just get it nice and close anyway. And now that we're basically over the center of the probe, let's just click on probing. And then we're going to choose our corner, enter in our diameter, and then just hit start probing. Now, again, it's asking you to confirm that your probe is working. We've already gone ahead and done this, but it's always worthwhile just to double check to make sure that the probe light is indicating for you. So let's just hit yes here. And now it's telling you exactly how much edge clearance it needs in order to be able to travel. So if you're too close to the front of your machine, i.e. in your home position, it may not be able to complete this probing cycle because it needs a little bit of room past the front of where the probe actually is. So you need to make sure that you allow at least this much space at the front and to the left hand side of where the piece is in order for this to work. So we've already done this. Let's just go ahead and hit yes. Now the first thing it wants to do is it wants to go through and rough probe the z-axis. So this is where it approaches it a little bit quicker just to find it. And then it's going to back off now and it's going to approach it at a very slow feed rate just to precisely find the surface of the probe. Now it's traveling to do rough probe the Y axis. And now it's going to go and do the X axis. So it's going to travel around here. Okay. And now that has completed. So let's just go in here and click on close wizard. Now you will notice on here, we do have some dimensions. So we've got minus 21.95 and 13 and 10.06. So let's go ahead and remove our probe and see how we can go straight to our corner. Okay, so our probe's out of the way now. Now, if you wanted to go to that zero position on the corner, the easiest way to do it is just hit go to zero XY, and that will take you directly above the corner, factoring in for the thickness of your end mill. So if it's a four mil end mill like we have in here, it will be two millimeters into the material in both directions. Now, we do have this 10.060 in here, so the same as before, if we were to, in our distance here, put 10.06060, then if we hit Z minus, that will move us directly to where the surface of the material would be. Um, we do have a little bit of curvature on this timber, but this has perfectly found exactly where we should be. And so that is now pretty much ready to go. So you would now be able to start planning your jobs from the bottom right hand corner. So let's take a look now at some of the other probing routines. We're just going to quickly reset this here. And So now we've gone ahead and reset this again. So the next step for us is we want to do and take a look at the circle probing. So we've already gone through and done the XYZ probing and that has found our corner. Now our CNC 3D touch probes, our XYZ touch probes, they do actually have the circle appearing so that the corner is right in the center of the circle but sometimes that's not the case. So we are just going to use the circle probing routine to try to find the middle of the circle here. So as you can see at the moment, 
we currently have our probe basically positioned above the actual circle on here. What we need to do now is we actually need to make sure that we lower our end mill below the surface of the circle, but set it up so that it is not actually touching the surface of the material. So this is very important. So we're just gonna click on close wizard and we're just gonna lower our tool down very carefully here. And we are going to try to get it so that it is just below the surface without being on our material. So we've lowered that down now. I'm just gonna raise this up one millimeter so we have a little bit of clearance. All right, so now the tip of our end mill is down within our circle itself. So now we should be good to probe. So let's just go into probing and we're just gonna move this over to the side. We are on circle probing. We have a four mil diameter end mill in there, the same one as before. We're pretty much good now. We just need to enter in the approximate diameter. This is really just used for us to be able to tell the machine how far it can safely travel. So I'm just gonna hit start probing on this one. And you'll notice that it's moving to the left-hand side first and it will do a rough probe. And then now it will do a fine probe on that side. And now it's gonna move over and do the right hand side. All right, now it will try to do the Y axis for us. Okay, and then now it's gonna go ahead and it is going to do the X axis again. And then it should finish up right in the center of the circle that was just probed. All right, and there we have it. So that has now finished up right in the center of where our circle is. And if we take a look here in Commander, you'll also notice that it has told us what the results were from that actual circle. So in this case, it was 20.2 mil by 19.475. Now it is important to keep in mind whenever you're running these probing cycles that cutters, especially like these two flute straight cuts, they're gonna have one dimension which will be the exact diameter of the cutter, but in the other dimension, due to the fact that they have carved the flutes into the cutters, it may be slightly less or slightly more when it does probe. So sometimes it's a good idea just to use a hardened round shaft and put that in first to the same diameter as your end mill um, and do it that way. Some people choose to try to put the cutting faced edge, so the widest part, so that it touches the probe while it's going. You can experiment with this um, and try to work out the best results. But basically this circle here is about 20.12 mil. So these results down here are relatively accurate. So that is basically how you go and do circle probing. Now, just a little tip here as well. If you're trying to find the dimensions of the inside of a rectangle, um, or any other sort of shape. You can definitely do it this way. Um, it works exactly the same way for finding the middle. It's just gonna touch on both sides and then it's gonna touch uh, the other direction on both sides and then find its center. So you can choose to do this for the inside of a square or a rectangle as well. Now, the next thing for us to check out here is gonna be the angle probing. So let's just go into angle 
And if you take a look on here, you can see which direction it's going to travel from and you can choose which axis you want to actually do. So what we want to do is we're going to take a look first at the instructions. So position your probe to the front left hand corner. So let's just go ahead and do that now. So we need to get up and out of this circle that we've made. So we can just hit Z plus and we're going to jog around here. So let's just go 10 mil. And now we're going to go down onto here. Now you can leave a little bit of space here if you want to. We have been quite liberal with this one. Um, the more distance that you give yourself, the more accurate that this will be. So let's just reduce this to one mil and start jogging this down here. Now you can choose to start this a little bit further away if you wish. We're gonna give ourselves a bit of room here. And I'm just gonna to try to nudge this so that we give ourselves the maximum amount of travel here. So that's looking pretty good on there. So basically we're pretty much ready to start angle probing. We're going to do the X axis. So we've lined it up for this. So depending on which one of these you choose, it will tell you where your end mill will start from and where it will travel to. And you just need to tell it how much distance it actually has. The important thing for getting an accurate result when doing this is to ensure that you definitely are probing on the flat sides of the probes and not the not the rounded side at all that is going to throw out your results so we're just going to make sure we're just going off the flat edges here so that is covered in the instructions though just here so let's choose x-axis in this case and let's just go ahead and hit start probing and of course you can see we are slightly lower than the edge of the probe this is critical as well just to make sure that it's definitely touching in the right spot All right, so that's just about to complete the rough probing in the second location. Now the fine probing. And that has now completed. Now, the reason why we've gone ahead and done this angle probe is to figure out exactly how square the actual job is. So you may need to know this information. So we've gone ahead and we've probed off here. And if you have a look at the bottom here, it says your job needs to rotate right 1.39 degrees. So that is how far off being perfectly square to your machine the actual job itself is. So this can be a handy little thing for you to be able to make some minor adjustments for lining things up properly. If you don't already have a jig down that you can use for keeping a nice uh, parallel edge with your machine. So this can be a handy little feature for you to go through. So that pretty much summarizes all of the features of the new probing wizard cycles that we've added, the circle probing and the angle probing. So let's take a quick look at some of the settings here. So what you'll notice is you have all of these different values. Each one of these different values has a little, has a little button next to it that you can click on and basically will give you some information about exactly what that particular function is doing. So this is obviously the top speed with which the, the axis will travel when it's rough probing. So that's the feed rate. You can adjust this accordingly. Definitely don't make this number too big even for the roughing. It's always a good idea just to keep that number a little bit lower just to ensure that you definitely get a good probe when the machine is decelerating and looking for the probe. So the same goes here with our fine probing feed rate. So this is how quickly it will travel when it's fine probing. The setup probing feed rate. So this value is basically when it's traveling from one place to another. So it's not actually probing but it's repositioning itself to go somewhere else. For example, when doing X, Y, Z probing, it's going to touch on the Y plate first and then travel around to the X. We may as well do that a little bit quicker because we're just repositioning. Now, probing Z max travel. So this is 50 millimeters here. 
So what this value actually is, is this is how far extra it will ask the probing cycle to travel. Plus, for example, in our z-axis probing, we've got this distance. So that would be 20 millimeters plus this 50 millimeters. So it's going to ask the probe to try to find the, the actual plate within 70 millimeters. If it doesn't find it within 70 millimeters, then it will throw an alarm to you and tell you that it was not able to find the probe. Now, there are a couple of things to be careful with here when you are trying to probe, and this is a common mistake that users make, is we've got this value in here of 20. We have this value here of 50, which makes a total of 70. So if we close out of this wizard, and if we go into our peripherals tab, if you have soft limits enabled, if you have a look at our Z max travel, you can see it's 105 millimeters. So what that means is that if we are at a particular height and we are trying to probe and we are already too far with this number, so, so for example, that's 70 millimeters, but we're 60 millimeters lower, it will throw an alarm because we have asked the probing cycle to potentially travel 70 millimeters. So what you can do to resolve this issue is either choose to increase your Z max travel, which is definitely not recommended to do unless you don't care about your actual Z maximum travel. Um, if you are concerned about it, definitely don't change this value. What you would be better off doing is when you go into your probing cycle, you can just reduce this number in here to a nice safe number. You could make it say 20 mil, in which case it would only ask the probing to travel 20 mil plus the 20 mil that you have here. And then that shouldn't trigger your soft limit alarm at all. So work with these settings and try to get them right. And that should fix the issues for you if you do encounter soft limit issues when you're trying to probe. Now, the next variable in here is our probing XY max travel. So exactly the same as the Z, but this is specifically just for X and Y. So it's going to increase these numbers of travel so that it knows exactly how far it's going to attempt to try to find that axis in. So the next option from here is our XY setup extra distance. So this is how far we're going to clear things for example, when you XYZ probing, if it's 50 mil in the X length, we're going to add this safe number to this num to the actual axis length. Um, and that is going to be like a safe travel over distance. Now, the next option from here is our probing Z setup travel. And so that is the, so five millimeters lower than top of probe. So this is how far, when it knows where the surface of the probe is, it's going to travel this much lower when it's trying to XYZ probe, for example. So this number here will basically, so, so you might need to adjust this if you're probing directly off a aluminium sheet, you're not going to be using a probe. You only want it to plunge a very short distance to make sure that it doesn't bottom out on the material. So you can adjust this number here to suit the material that you're actually using. So you might only want it to be one millimeter as opposed to the standard value that it has in here, um, which is five millimeters. So it's important for you to actually follow this um, and make sure you set this accordingly. Now the probing finish distance, so this is exactly as it sounds, how far off an axis it will actually back off after it touches and probes that axis. And this value also forms your overall job coordinates that you see in here after a probing cycle completes. These things are all factored in for and applied. Now all axes pull off distance. So when it is pulling off from a particular axis, i.e. when it's finished its rough probing, it's going to pull off this distance to complete the fine probing before it moves on to the next axis or completes the actual probing cycle. So this pretty much covers everything to do with the new probing cycles in here and explains them in detail. So hopefully this helps you guys with your probing and addresses any potential issues you may have. 
as usual, guys, thank you very much for your support and we would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we're going to continue to make some awesome new content and some changes to our Commander software to try to make things better for you. Have a great day.